Hi everybody, Physics Ninja here. Today I've got a great problem on electrostatics. What I want to do today is I want to use Coulomb's law to calculate the force on a charge, and I also want to use this other equation, which is written as force equals to the charge multiplied by the electric field at a specific position. So what we're going to do is we're going to compare both methods, and here's the specific charge distribution that I'm looking at. So I'm going to consider three point charges. Uh, we're going to keep it a little bit simple. We're going to keep this a one-dimensional problem. So I've got the three point charges on the x-axis right here. And my goal is going to be to calculate what is the force on the green charge, the one I have labeled Q3. Now, it's going to interact with the other charges around it. So in the first part of the video, we're going to do it using Coulomb's law. We're going to add all the forces acting on it to get the net force on charge Q3. On the second part, we're going to first calculate what is the electric field at that position where Q3 is located. And once we have the electric field at that position, then you simply multiply by Q3, the charge at that position, and you get the force. I'm going to show you that they're the exact same. Same. But it's a great problem just to uh, illustrate the differences and similarities between the two approaches. All right, like with all my videos, if you like it, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing to Physics Ninja. It's the best way to support what I do. All right, let's get started. All right, so my goal now is to calculate the force on this charge, the charge Q3, which has a magnitude of two microcoulombs. It's interacting now with a three microcoulomb charge and a negative six microcoulomb charge. So the first thing we do is I'm simply going to draw a free body diagram on the charge Q3 right here. So we have to label all the forces acting on Q3. First we look at the interaction between Q1 and Q3. Since both of those are positive point charges, you go on the charge Q3 and I'm simply going to draw a force and let me give it a label, I'll call it F1. It's the force of charge one on three. So I'll just actually just write this over here, Q1 on Q3. Now the magnitude, and if I was gonna write that whole uh, force here as a vector, I could do it like this. I would do K, Q1, Q3. Now divided by the distance squared, the distance between Q1 and Q3 is the summation of R1 and R2. So I have to add both of those numbers to get the total distance and then I square it. Now, if I wanna represent that as a vector, I could put an I hat over here. Now, what you do is uh, just calculate what the magnitude of that force is. So the K constant is nine times 10 to the nine. Uh, Q1 is three, microcoulomb is 10 to the negative six. And then Q3 is two times 10 to the minus six. And now here I'm going to be dividing by that total distance. So if I add up 10 centimeters and 15 centimeters, I get 0.25 meters. I gotta convert that into meters if I want a force in newtons. And do not forget to square it. Now again, I have a direction to that and I'm representing that direction with an I hat vector. That tells me that this force is pointing in the positive X direction. So at the end, this is pretty straightforward. Just substitute in all our numbers and I get a force of 0.864 newtons, and it's in the positive x direction. So that's the force F1. Now the next thing I wanna do is I wanna calculate another force. Charge Q3 is also interacting with the charge Q2. Now, since Q2 is negative and Q3 is positive, Q3 is being attracted to Q2. Therefore, I should have a force that goes in this direction. I'm gonna label that one F2. That is the force of Q2 on Q3. Now there's also interactions between Q1 and Q2, but I'm not looking for that because in this problem, we are looking only at the forces acting on this rightmost charge Q3. All right, so the next thing we have to do is we have to calculate what this vector is. Well, this vector here is F2. Again, I'm going to write it down as a vector. So it has a magnitude, which is K. Okay, now you have to be a little bit careful here. Since Q2 is negative, I'm only gonna write this like this. I'm gonna write the magnitude of Q2. Uh, what else? Multiplied by the charge Q3, divided by the distance, and now the distance is simply going to be R2, and I have to square that value. And now I wanna put the direction into this, because look at this vector F2, it's pointing to the left. So that should be in the negative X direction, so I multiply it by minus I hat. 
All right, at the end now, we substitute our numbers to get the total vector F2. Let's substitute in all the numbers. 9 times 10 to the 9 for the K constant. Uh, the magnitude of Q2 now is 6 microcoulombs, 10 to the minus 6. And charge Q3 again is 2 microcoulombs, 2 to the minus 6. Divided by the distance, again, this is R2 is the distance between Q2 and Q3, and that is 15 centimeters, 0.15 meters, and you square that value. So at the end, what is the total vector? Well, here, let me not, I shouldn't forget to keep that unit vector here because at the end, I do want to get a vector for F2. All right, so the total vector here at the end, you substitute the numbers, you get minus 4.8 Again, that'll be measured in newtons, and there you have it. So you see that vector now is in the negative x direction for F2. Now, if I'm looking for the net force acting on charge Q3, what you have to do is you simply have to add both of those forces, and you're all done. So we're going to add them both as vectors, so I get 0 0.864 in the positive x direction, and then I get a 4.8 in the negative x direction. Uh, you add both of those together, and I get a net force of negative 3.936 newtons. And again, I'll include the direction over there. If I was going to represent that as a vector, I could put something like this for the net force. The negative sign indicates the direction of that force. All right, so in method two, again, I'm going to calculate the force on charge Q3. However, this time we're going to do a little bit different. I want to use this formula here, F equals to QE. So what does it mean? Uh, it means that if I want to get the force, now in this case, it's going to look like this. It's going to look now, the charge that I'm looking at will be the charge Q3, and it's going to be produced, or it's going to be located at a position where it's inside an electric field, and that electric field I'm going to call the electric field at point P. So this is going to be the position here of point P, and what I'm going to do here just at the beginning is let's actually just get rid of this charge right now, and let me move everything here over to the side, and let's just place a point there, where I'm eventually going to place that charge here. But for now, let's ignore the charge, and we're going to look at what is the total electric field at point P produced by Q1 and Q2. So this is really, really an important point over here, is that this electric field is produced by all of the other charges. It's not produced by Q3. So this will be a function of Q1 and Q2. So let's go ahead and first draw the vectors. So we have a positive charge Q1. It produces an electric field over here that points away from its charge because it's a positive, and that is our convention, and I'm calling that the electric field one. Now, charge Q2 is a negative charge. It also produces an electric field over here at point P, and here is how I can draw that vector. The convention is that the electric field points toward negative charges. All right, remember that the magnitude of an electric field produced by a point charge is given by KQ divided by R squared. If I'm looking for the total electric field at that point, again, I'm going to have to sum up two vectors. It's going to be the contribution of E1 plus the vector E2. Now let's go ahead and write down an expression for each one of those vectors. For the vector E1, you simply have KQ1 that's the charge that's producing that field, and divided by the distance. The distance is R1 plus R2, and you square that direction. Now that is only the magnitude. I'm trying to add vectors here, so the vector I would write it as plus I hat. All right, now the next thing I wanna do is I want to add the second vector, E2. The magnitude of that vector is K. Um, I'm going to now use absolute values because I'm only interested in the magnitude here, so it's Q2, and the distance now from Q2 to point P is R2, that 15 centimeters, and you can't forget to square that. Now I have to indicate this direction, so I multiply all this by minus I hat, a unit vector in the minus X direction. Now that's it. All we have to do now is substitute some numbers into this, and we're going to get the total electric field at point P. So this is what it looks like. I'm going to factor out a K constant because that is common to both terms. I'll open up a big bracket and let's do this. So, and on the other side of the bracket, I'm going to just have my direction vector like this. 
So uh, the numbers that we get here are 3 microcoulombs times 10 to the minus 6 divided by the distance. The distance is 25 centimeters, and I have to square that value. Now, that negative sign I'm going to keep with this term because I've only factored out the i. So this second term here is negative. Again, that magnitude of the charge will be 6 times 10 to the minus 6. And now divided by the distance, and this is 15 centimeters, 0.15 meters squared. If I substitute all of these numbers in the calculator, I get this number here, one point, or negative, 1.968. Now it's a pretty big number, times 10 to the 6 newtons per coulomb. And again, it's going to be a vector here. So the E total, if you were gonna draw it, it would look like this. So the total electric field at point P points to the left direction. And you could see that reflected by having that negative sign in the front. All right, the question was, however, let's calculate the force. So we have to use our equation right here. To get the total force now acting on the charge Q3, well, what you have to do is you have to place charge Q3 at that point because now we know the total electric field at that point. So this becomes a straightforward calculation. You simply multiply by the charge. The charge is 2 times 10 to the negative 6. And the electric field is this vector right here, minus 1.968 times 10 to the 6 in the i hat direction. So my total force at the end of the day is going to be minus 3.936 newtons. And again, that force is the exact same value that we found in the previous calculation. The net force is acting here in the left direction here, in the negative x direction. Okay, so that is a very nice illustration of the differences between using Coulomb's law and using this electric field calculation first and simply multiplying by the charge. All right, I wanna show you why this works the way it works. So let me go back to the force calculation using Coulomb's law. I'm gonna get rid of all the numerical calculations here. Um, let's go ahead and fix this. So this is what we had for Coulomb's law. And on this side, get rid of all the numbers for a second so we'll understand how this works. If you were going to calculate the net force here on a vector, or as a vector rather, uh, again, I'm just summing both of these values. So I would have the force F1, KQ1, Q3 divided by this R1 plus R2 squared with an I hat vector, and then plus F2, and F2, let me bring the negative sign to the front, K, the magnitude of Q2, Q3 divided by R2 squared, and again, another I hat vector. Now, one thing you should notice is that both of those terms include this charge Q3. It is common to both of those terms. So let's imagine that we would simply take that outside of our expression. So what if we would just simply factor it out, and what would we be left with? We would be left with this, KQ1 divided by R1 plus R2, square the whole thing, and in the I hat direction, and minus KQ2 R2 squared, and again, I hat direction. So this whole term here, right, this whole term in the square bracket, look what that actually represents. This here, first of all, it has units of newtons per coulomb. And this is actually an expression for the total electric field at point P. It is actually the summation of the electric field produced by charge Q1 plus the vector for the electric field produced by the charge Q2. So at the end, that is why you see the similarities between these two calculations because they're the exact same calculation. They're simply packaged up a little bit differently. So here you would have simply Q3 minus the electric field at the position of the charge Q3. All right, folks, that's it for me. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Uh, we'll see you next time.